Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina, and today is part two of the FTA, free-to-air satellite system install here on the farm. So you're going to need some stuff if you're following along with this and wanting to set up a system like this for yourself. This is an inch and a half pipe we picked this up, or conduit, we picked this up at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever, the home store in your area, and it was a 10-foot section. I cut it down to six. You can have it lower or higher. And remember, the kit comes with a mount to mount it on the side of a building or on a roof, but I'm choosing to have a freestanding. It just uh, it just works better for me, I guess. Anyway, I've cut this down to six foot, and uh, only you know two feet of that is in the ground. I've got one bag of concrete that I'm going to be putting in here in a second, and I've got some other tools here, and this is important stuff. So at the very least, you want to have a level like this because you want this pole to be as straight as possible. But truthfully, if you can, you want to get something like this, which is a declination meter, and that's going to show us just exactly how many degrees this thing is, because this thing, the closer we can get this to zero on all sides with this meter, the better it's going to be for picking up satellites, especially if I decide to motorize this thing at some point so it goes through the arc. As if it's even one degree off, as we swing through the arc, that changes that arc rather drastically and you can have a loss of signal on some or more satellites. Now I'm only trying to get one satellite here initially and as uh, you'll see here in a second, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get it because we're down here in a, in a we call it the fishbowl, but we're surrounded by mountains on all sides and even though it looks like I'm going to be able to pull it off, if you'll look over here, It's actually quite a bit up a hill and there are a lot of trees so the angle is going to be real close but we're hoping that it's going to work so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and mix up a small bag of concrete and i'm going to fill in this hole and we're going to try to get this thing as close to plumb as possible and then i'm going to let it sit and uh, we'll continue this video the same video here in a second of the magic of video editing it'll be tomorrow we'll install the dish the wiring and that'll wrap up part two and part three of course will be actually doing some blind scans and trying to find the signals that we're trying to find. So let's get started. I've got a small bucket here. I'm just gonna break open this bag of concrete. I'm not even gonna mix the entire bag at once because I'm not sure how much of it I'll need. So we'll start with about half the bag. Go ahead and dump this in, see where that brings us. All right, once I've got my bag mixed up and poured in the hole, now it's time to try to get this thing set up. So the idea here is to get it dead on, right? So within zero degrees if you can and i don't know if you can see that but we're going to rotate that around right checking it and we're going to continue to check it on all sides until it's set i'll take some lumber and push it up against it to hold it in place and we're going to let this sit for an entire 24 hours that's it i'll see you in the morning All right, here we are. It has been about ooh, 15, 16 hours. The sun's getting ready to rise over here off to the camera. And uh, it is time to mount the actual an uh, antenna, the satellite dish itself, onto this pole. The pole's set pretty well overnight. So I didn't show the assembly of this thing, but it's relatively easy. It's straightforward. So the next step we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and slide this thing down on the pole. And uh, we'll tighten it down here. We won't tighten it all the way because we're going to have to make some adjustments. Okay, once we've got the dish on the pole, which is where we're at right now, we have some numbers that we need to look at. The first number is going to be what satellite you're looking to get. For me, it's going to be Galaxy 99 West. There's Galaxy, I think it's 16 or 18. Anyway, it's at 99 West. So I want to make sure that my first measurement is pointing towards that satellite, or at least as close as I can get. And for that, you're gonna need a regular old-fashioned compass. Now the compass 
There's two websites that I'm going to reference here. One is Lynchsat, L-Y-N-G-S-A-T. That's going to show you every satellite in the ARC and what's on those satellites. The second site is like a satellite finder. I'll have it listed down here below. I can't remember the name of it, but it shows you your exact property. You can enter it in. It's going to show you the elevation you're going to have to have and the positioning. And it'll also show you if there's any obstructions that are going to be in the way to tell you if you're going to have the opportunity to get that signal or not. Again, here, because of the rake of the mountain, I might have a problem, but we're going to give it a shot. For this satellite at my house, I need to put my compass at 214.8 degrees. So that is what I'm going to try to align this dish up with right now. And the uh, first thing you're going to do is find north. I'm going to say that's good. Now, I'm not going to go crazy tightening these down because you're going to make some final adjustments here once this is all set up. But for right now, I will snug these down just so this thing doesn't drop to the ground or move in the wind. Excellent. Now, the last setting you have to have here is called elevation. Well, not the last setting. Now, the second to last setting you're going to have to have here is elevation. And your elevation at this site is 44.1 degrees. So I'm going to have to rotate this thing up. Ah, through the magic of video editing, here we are <laughs> the following day, unfortunately. Yeah, I had to stop what I was doing. Got called away on other, uh, other business, unfortunately. But here we are. I did go ahead and get some of this stuff set up, and I want to show you exactly what it is that I did and how to set one of these puppies up. So I mounted my dish on our pole from yesterday, and uh, you saw that part in the first part of part two here with a different shirt and maybe a little less hair growth. But anyway... This piece right here is called our LNB. This is actually the receiver for the satellite system. So our signals come down, hit this thing, and they are reflected and picked up in a concentrated form by this very small LNB, the actual antenna. Amazing to think that 22,000 miles away, there is a 50-watt transmitter sending signals down right now to Earth, and that's what it takes to pick it up. It's actually kind of impressive. Now this is a single LNB. You can get ones that have two ports, some that have three or even four ports. And then there's also designs you can pick up where you'll have a, a rack that sits about that large and you'll have multiple LNBs so you can pick up multiple satellites without moving the position of the satellite. But for this basic installation, and eventually I am going to modify this, but for this basic installation, I'm interested in getting one particular satellite and one particular channel on that satellite. So this is all I need. Now, I've taken just regular coax cable, the same type you would use for a TV antenna or cable TV setup, and run that down here, and I've taped it off. And I'm going to move the camera around to the back, but before I do, let's talk about the first adjustment you're going to need to make. Now, I talked about this before, but let me say it again because I don't remember what I filmed last week. We have a couple of adjustments on our satellite dish. Azimuth, the position on the compass, I want to make sure that I'm pointing this thing at roughly the position I think it needs to be in order to pick up the signals that I want to pick up. The second one is this right here. It's called skew. And as you can see, this little piece is not perfectly centered. It's not, it's not straight up and down. You can see this is offset a little bit. And that's the degrees of skew. So for my position on Earth, I actually need to be at about a 21 and a half, almost a 22% skew. And there's east and west or you know <clears throat> positive and, and negative skew in my case i'm going with uh negative skew so right 21 percent all right let me grab the camera i'm going to move it around back and i will show you the other which is elevation and once we have that we're ready to start scanning the skies and help us lock in our signal okay so once you've got this thing dialed in roughly and i do have this one set up pretty well already because again i did this uh, before the rain came a couple days ago when i started shooting this part <laughs> unfortunately i had to put the camera up for that but once we've got this thing sort of dialed in we've used our compass to find our azimuth we've used the computer or the internet here to find our elevation for the satellite we're looking to get there's going to be some fine tuning i have yet in all my years of messing with these things been able to just hit it right off the bat using uh, uh, coordinates given to me by the internet because it just there's always some difference out there right but we're gonna get it close and what I have here and let me show you this right quick and you don't need this this was something I picked up and I intend to resell it in fact it was resold to me this was a used item this is a, a, a generic Chinese version called the V8 sat finder and what this thing is is a little battery powered TV set 
it's got a hut plug in right here to plug right directly to the satellite and it has some satellites loaded in and unfortunately they're all from like you know european size satellites the eastern side so the particular satellite i'm looking for doesn't exist so in another video perhaps i'll show you how to enter all that in but anyway you go in here you're going to turn this thing on and you're going to do what's called a blind scan and that's going to allow you to track down and hopefully it finds at least one signal that's strong enough it'll list it there you'll take a look at what that channel or radio station is that you found you'll reference the chart to see where that channel is on the spectrum and maybe you're lucky and it's the satellite you were actually looking for but more often than not it may be a satellite or two off in either direction and you'll have to adjust both the position of the antenna and the height of the antenna or i'm sorry the elevation of the antenna and then of course there's also fine tuning to the skew once you get it so i will quickly show you how this works um but i'm not going to go too in depth that's just not the point of this video here but once we found this we're going to then hook our cabling up to our receiver in the house we'll do a full scan of the satellite we're looking for and we'll get our signals and that'll be of course part three one more thing to note here this needs to be grounded it's a metallic object it could certainly take a static electricity uh, build up and damage your equipment or it could take a direct hit from a lightning strike and cause serious damage to your house your equipment and so on and so forth so i have a grounding rod that exists over here i don't know if you can see it i'm trying to do this without doing it but right over here there's a satellite or there's an antenna uh, mast and there's an, a grounding rod there so i'm just going to tap in and run another ground over from here to there just to be safe and the cabling that's just regular coax cable rg6 is what i'm using here but you can even use rg59 in a pinch um, and that's going to run into the receiver there so i'm going to lower the camera down so we can plug in here i'll turn this thing on this thing is is it's not a name brand it is used it is uh, not great but it's okay the sun isn't really up yet so you might be able to see the screen <laughs> let's do it okay before i get started on this let me just point this out this was about 40 bucks on uh, ebay used um, you don't need to have something of this caliber to get this job done and, and this actually cost twice what I paid for the actual receiver but again this is something I'm going to buy to get this set up and then I'm going to resell you can just use a meter like this this is just a swing meter that shows you signal strength and while it's a little harder to determine what satellite you're on using something like that as long as you're willing to go back and forth between the house and the unit it certainly works and and I've never owned one of these before all back in the day with the c-band stuff that's exactly how I did it I would use a regular signal strength meter lock into a, a solid transponder and then go inside the house and do a scan there and figure out what's going on but let me turn this thing on and i'll show you you're going to hear a rather annoying beep here start in a second certainly have the right to say what's true what? that's the sound we're listening for and that is a signal strength so you have an audible tone which you can get a beeper a signal strength meter off of the internet for maybe 15 dollars that does a similar thing and uh, and if you can see it and you can't because this thing is such a piece of junk but it has a really dim screen here and there's actually a meter bar that gives you signal strength and signal quality you're looking for a signal strength somewhere in the high 80s if possible and signal quality at least 65 percent if you want to have any chance of getting that signal for all 24 of hours and um, that's just it so what we're going to do here is i'm going to find a uh, let's see i'm going to find uh, i'm going to lock in here onto something all right so i found a signal again you're not going to be able to see this sounds like leonard nimoy Boy, this Leonard Nimoy. So once we've got that little beeper sound going, we're going to make our final adjustments. I'm going to elevate my dish or lower my dish fractionally, and I'm talking fractions of an inch, to get the highest signal level. I'm going to move the dish back and forth on the compass, the azimuth, to get my highest signal level. And then I'm going to adjust my skew ever so slightly, if necessary, to get the highest signal level. I'm going to do all that, and I'm going to lock in to what I'm looking for and then I'm going to do a blind scan here uh, with this tool to make sure that I'm on the right satellite. I am. I can see the signal that I'm trying to reach. And so in part three, we'll go inside and on a, on a better screen where you can actually see it, I will show you how to go ahead and scan these satellites so that you can hook up and get the stuff you want. Later on this year, maybe next year, 
uh, I will probably upgrade this unit to a movable dish platform so it'll have a movable dish and I'll be able to get the whole arc. Now one other way you can go about tracking down these satellites that I found before I go here is there are apps for your cell phone that actually use your GPS location which I find disturbing having location on but whatever and you can take that location and actually stand here and you'll see the whole arc of the satellites right on your property so before you even purchase one of these you can know if the signal that you're interested in getting is available if there's a tree blocking it a house whatever anyway that's it for part two i'm eric the owner of farpoint farms hope you enjoyed this rather strange video sorry that it took several days to complete uh, but you know it is what it is and uh, i'll see you next time take care Something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.